So the wheel of the planets traced, uh, traced a band of stars which were divided by the ancients into 12 signs of 30 degrees each, corresponding to 12 constellations. The movements of the seven classical planets through the 12 signs were carefully studied and correlations were revealed with earthly events. Yay! Okay, now we're finally getting to some sense of astrology. So let's review our three and four relationships. We have four elements and four seasons, and all the fours, fire, water, air, and earth, acted upon by the three modes, cardinal, fixed, and mutable. Cardinal being the excited commencement of something, fixed being the life of that element or the life of that thing, the kind of in-between, um, and then mutable being the fading away or the, or the spiritualization of that element or of that experience. Um, all sensation comes in a waveform. It comes in a, it's turning on, it's on, it's off. It's turning on, it's on, it's off, right? That's how sensation is. Can't be anything else but that, unless you're in samadhi. Then it's like, what's observing that, right? That's the one. So sensation is the three underlying the, the one. So three acting upon the four um, creates our 12 signs. So we have our three modes up here and our four elements. We get 12 archetypes that we can talk shit about. Yeah. So, um, who's an Aries in here? Oh, whew, you can feel that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love Aries. You're so fun. So Aries is, is the cardinal aspect, the fiery aspect of fire. So that's like the intensity, the, uh, the boldness, the uh, the impetuousness, the liveliness. It's exciting. Aries are great. Lady Gaga's in Aries. Um, yeah. Let's look at the emperor. So Aries is the emperor. And the emperor comes in and says, I am. That's the motto of Aries. Aries comes into a room. Now, you have to understand that astrology is so nuanced. So please don't go out of here thinking, well, I'm an Aries. I'm supposed to be all like, extroverted and could like this and con it's no it's not like that you got your moon you got your rising you have all these different aspects you have so much else going on and on top of that why identify with anything but pure consciousness um like but yeah so right so if anything if you want to identify with something in astrology at least look at your sun your moon and your uh, your rising and see how that cr paints a picture of some of your patterns that that could be fun um, but yeah, generally Aries come in and they say, yeah, this is what I'm about. And they take control and they're not afraid and they're not afraid of conflict and they get things done and emperor vibes. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go through them in order. I want to go through them in, in elemental order so we can see how the three kind of comes through. So after Aries kind of comes in and says, all right, we're doing this. Leo comes in and says, all right, let's keep this fire going. Let's keep this dance going. And we know that fire, yeah, Aries, yes, that's it, yes. I love it. Um, who's, who's a Leo in, in this room? I got a Leo moon. Work, yeah. So I once dated a drag queen who was a triple Leo. I don't know how I'm here today. <laughs> Well, let me say, maybe that's why I am the way I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was so fun. It was so fun. I love Leo so much. Um, yeah, Leo's. Woo. So, yeah. So Leo's are so cool because they are creativity at its finest. And what Leo's do, and they're the strength card, which is Leo's, the lion, their superpower, they come in and they say, okay, I have a story to tell and this is going to benefit the world. And what they do is they, with their vulnerability and their courage and elements, uh, aspects of loyalty and trust, they come in and they say, I'm going to share this part of myself vulnerably with the world or with the room and everyone witnesses it and takes part in it because they themselves have that as well. So that's kind of what, and like, creating art is like a reflection of who we are and a shared experience with someone else. That's the superpower of Leo. Leos are very creative. 
Um, you know, people say like, oh, Leos are egotistical, but it's like, no, it's the it's the vulnerability, it's the ability to say, I'm gonna I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be myself, whether you want to or not. And if you choose, you can see yourself in myself, and we can have that experience together. Um, there's a confidence, but the, it's there's a creative flair with that as well. Um, the the strength card has to do with working that creative energy and more deeply has to do with working kundalini energy and ascending um, to higher states of consciousness but yeah strength and and leo very very powerful any sagittarians in here rising rising cool no sun sag sagittarians sagittarius okay cool they're off running around <laughs> Uh, they can't sit still, um, which is cool. Sagittarians are fun. So Sagittarians are all about wandering and moving, but the movement doesn't necessarily mean physical. Uh, it can be physical. It can be like journeys, but it can also be intellectual. It can be philosophical. It can be learning, um, but they're always moving. And the Sagittarius is so cool because it's literally the um the ability of two forces to interact to create a third force that is even bigger we've we've talked about that in the, the tractus but in uh, in sagittarius it's the mix of the bow so the bow you have to pull back the arrow and then you have to release it right and the bow going one way and the arrow pulling the string the other way that opposition creates the energy right or it, the kinetic uh the potential energy into the kinetic energy and so that's their expertise. So um, like walking is Sagittarian because you're pushing the earth and the earth is staying where it is to support you moving forward. That's a Sagittarian experience. You can take these signs and like make them very like literal and bring them into your world functionally. Um, temperance is Sagittarius and, and temperance is about blending two worlds together to create a third, very simply put. So this is Sagittarius is the centaur bringing together the the horse and the human figure, yeah. Uh, Sagittarius is also the bending of the conscious and bending of the within and the, and the without to create synchronicity. So if you ever read Carl Jung, there's a lot about synchronicity. That relationship between inner world and outer world, very Sagittarian. <clears throat> yeah, they're fun. Cancers. Any Cancers in here? Oh, Cancer. Yes, I love Cancers. Yeah. We've yeah, cool. I love cancers. Um, you guys are the best. So cancers are like the feelers, you know, of the zodiac. Also the moms of the zodiac. Also the crybabies of the zodiac. And I love that. I love that for you. Love that for you. Um, my mom's a cancer. I'm a Pisces. We have a lot of feels. Except to me as the Gemini moon. The Gemini moon. Okay. <laughs> I'm feeling that right now, and I'm so with you, but I'm also feeling this. Oh, my God. <laughs> right? Yeah. There's three. So, so um, in a chart, all of your planets, well, your seven planets are in all different signs, and that includes your sun and your moon, which are big, and then your rising is where the horizon was at the time of your birth. So wherever that sign is, on, wherever the horizon line is when you were born, that sign is your rising, which is the face you show the world. The sun sign is who you are essentially, and the moon sign is how you uh, generate uh, joy and sadness and react to the world, and it's more subconscious. Um, that's not the same for everyone, by the way. There's astrologers who say that the rising is who you really are, and the sun is the face you show the world. It's a little different, but that's kind of a general way to look at it. Um, but yeah, cancers are the crabs, and crabs have these shells, and shells protect them. So the cancers, like the moms, are the nurturers and the protectors. They protect their family, themselves, and their inner experience. So they are like this submarine that is going deep into an emotional experience, into the sea. And the better equipped they are in their submarine, the less likely there will be a breach. So they're all about setting boundaries to help themselves and help others. Um, so whether that's protecting with the boundary or all of that. They're all about creating a wall. And that's why we have a protector, a, a charioteer here, uh, representing protection. And then the chariot itself represents this line of defense that's protecting the inner world. Um, we can go as deep as to say that it is, it is through cancer that we experience our 
life because it is throughout the walls we put up um, that define who we are as opposed to everything that we are not, in big quotes, it allows us for identity. So chariot is huge with identity. It is the body that is working for the uh, mind and the mind working, or the personality, the personality being a vehicle for the soul, or the jiva, the jiva being a vehicle of Brahman or consciousness. It's like Russian dolls. Um, Scorpio? Oh, moon and rising. Oh, yeah. Moon and rising, too? Oh, word. <laughs> That's so fun. So Scorpios are the death card. I'm not surprised. No, just <laughs> I, I love the death card. Um, so Scorpios are so, I love Scorpios so much. I don't know why they get a bad rap. I know why. <laughs> Let me stop. I know why. It's because Scorpios know things about you before you do. Because Scorpios are investigators. They're so connected to their intuition, and they pick up on things. But the reverse is not often true. You, it's sometimes hard to pick up on a Scorpio because they're always changing. And why are they always changing? Death, change, transformation. They're always changing because they're always in some way looking for the next intense experience. They are like adrenaline junkies, but you would never know because they keep it all in here, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's fun though, but like, I, love, I mean, I'm a Capricorn, so we share that Mars relationship, and Mars is intense, it's adrenaline. So Mars brings Capricorn adrenaline to like, accomplish certain things and bring Scorpio adrenaline to change and transform and to kind of experience things. Scorpios are, are great, get yourself a Scorpio. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'll have time to go through all of them. Uh, maybe I'll rush a little. Maybe we can finish them. Pisces. Um, where are my Pisces at? Woo. Yes, yes, totally. And I don't have this purpose. Yeah, it's a bunch of psychic Pisces flowing around. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so Pisces is uh, the moon. And Pisces, the symbol of Pisces, you know, you think it's the fish. It's actually the sea. And what the sea is a symbol of is boundless consciousness, oceanic, blissful, boundless consciousness. Pisces is a sign of the mystic because Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac and it's the 12th house, which is the t house of sorrows. And traditionally, this is where we would all go to the bar and live out the rest of our lives drunk and in denial of our mortality, potentially. But, um, you know, it's, in modern times, it's like, oh, let's think about mortality. Let's think about who we are. Um, and so it's kind of like the path of the mystic or the shaman or somebody who wants to travel in between worlds. So Pisces are very sensitive because of that. They're very psychic, they're very aware, they're very much about subjective experiences. And so the moon card shows us the, the fear and the threshold of going outside of our human experience into something larger, which is the discipline of mysticism. Now, the moon card, what it is uh, expressing to us esoterically, another thing you will find hard to find in books, is that this card represents our ability to go beyond our personal memory and regain the memory of not just all of our human lives, but all of our lives in all species. This is a practice that is, uh, is expressed in something called Lieber Thish Harb. It's a weird word, Thish Harb, by Aleister Crowley. Oh, shit, he's talking about Crowley. Oh, no, everyone run. Um, <laughs> Uh, that talks about the going in and uh, reversing your mind so much that you start to regain memory of all of your past lives, including as a dog, as a what, and that's what this card represents. And so in, in doing that, you can do something called crossing the abyss, which is a, a serious ego death, a, a moment of spiritual ascent. Um, but you, you can't really do that safely without remembering all of your karma, all of your past lives. Uh, but the general idea of Pisces in itself is generally kind of like moving outside of this experience going beyond that last sign of the and then st eventually starting the cycle over again with that uh, Aries saying I am which is the first sign um, Libra oh, I love Libra so much who's a Libra in here yes Libra Libras are so great Libras are um, I, I, I used this yesterday um, oh, you know that movie Twilight <laughs> 
<laughs> so Jasper, I think his name is, the vampire that can vibe check the room. Um, now his, his personality is not a Libra at all, the, very much the opposite, but his skill is very much Libra. So the ability of Libra is to balance to balance the vibes, literally take the vibes of anything and like restring a musical inf instrument so the vibes of the sound is all balanced. Um, justice, balance, right? Mm -hmm. Libra is also karma. Libras are great. They're always about like making, uh, making the best of what's happening now so everyone's as most comfortable as they can be in the moment. Um, they're so good. Um, what else we have? Aquarius, I love you guys so much. Um, Aquarians are the star. How many Aquarians we have in here? Oh, of course, only one. Oh, two? I'm moon. Moon? Okay. Yeah, Aquarians are awesome. They're like the aliens of the zodiac. They're like, you look at them and you're like, you're so cool. Don't get anything you're saying, but it's cool. <laughs> right? <laughs> no idea where you're at, but I'm cool with it. Like, they're, they're so fun. They're, so, they're literally out of this world, the stars. Right? Um, so the stars, uh, is all, Aquarians are all about being themselves, being unique. I love Aquarians. They're so good. They're just like, and they will, not, they will stop at nothing to honor the truth that they know in themselves and in the world, in who they are, but also in what's happening in the progress of humanity. So the Aquarians are the people that are constantly burned at the stake, literally or metaphorically, because they're constantly the ones that are, people are like, what do you mean? And they're like 10 light years ahead of you in science, in culture, in, philo in whatever in pioneering the human experience, they're like, no, we can actually do better. And everyone's like, what do you mean? We're doing fine. It's fine, I swear, at birding, you know? <laughs> Aquarians are like, no, we got to do better. Um, I love Aquarians. That's the star, hope. Uh, the star is all about what, what, like, what do you, your vision, um, but also your honesty with yourself. Um, Gemini, oh, shit. Um, you, you Geminis are really the best. Uh, who's a Gemini in here? Don't be afraid to put your hands up. I love you guys. <laughs> Two, and that's opposite sides of the room, right? The duality <laughs> of the Gemini. So the Gemini is the lovers, and the Gemini is all about curiosity and multiplicity. Now, uh, now a lot of times Geminis get um, accused of being two-faced and all of that, but the, the thing that's happening with the Geminis is there's this innocent curiosity behind all of everything that they do, and they want to experience everything. They want to give everyone the time of day. And they're constantly like, ooh, what's next? Ooh, what's next? It's beautiful. It's, uh, and they, they actually consider more things than most signs. And to other people, we, we kind of, other signs, we, we stay put in who we are and our identity and what we believe. Geminis are like, well, I'll try this on, and then I'll try that on. And that, that can bother some people, but it's the openness that created the whole world. And that's why the lover's card is the creation of the world through division. Remember before when we were looking at the Tetractus, we were like consciousness dividing itself? That is Gemini. That's saying, ooh, this is fun, but I can conceive of myself and I conceive of more and many. Yes, that's Gemini. Geminis are brilliant thinkers. Um, they're, they're so much fun. There's, this card is so deep. You can, there's so much stuff here. But without Gemini, there would be no possibility of relationship between anything. That's why it's the lover's card. It's you and it's me, and now we can have a dance, right? Um, Capricorn. Yeah, I mean, I can say it because I'm a Capricorn. I wouldn't trust one, but it depends on where their other planets are. Because Capricorn's the devil. So Capricorns are, they are like very hardworking and they're very um, attached to a goal. And because of that attachment, it... It's the devil. There's attachment. There's like identification with that goal and that process. And that's the shadow aspect of it. But the very normal, beautiful aspect of it is the creative aspect. They look at something and say, I want to do this. And they will stop at nothing until they do it if it takes them 100 years. And that creative process, that creative agency is the lust of the devil. So the devil in, this, in the tarot represents the material universe. It's not a bad thing, it's a normal thing. It's our body, it's what regulates our body. It's sex, it's procreation, it's desire. All these things are connected to Capricorn and our goat friend here. Um, yeah, modeled off of Baphomet. Who works with Baphomet? Anyone? Yeah, a little? Love Baphomet, giving me non-binary goodness, yeah. <laughs> Baphomet's, um, kind of from from my research like an, a synthetic deity he was kind of made up 
along the lines of things. He's the one who goes like this. But he's not like the devil. Everyone looks at him like, oh, shit. It's like, it's literally the yin-yang. It's like the coming together of opposites. If anything, the Baphomet is union. It's yoga. It's pure union of subject and object. Um, OK, let's keep moving forward, because we're probably out of time. So Taurus uh, is the Hierophant. Now, a lot of people look at the Hierophant as a negative card, because they see dogma. And that's cool. It can be that. It can stand for dogma and rules and restrictions and religions, but it can also be anything that connects you to something else. Religion, doctrine, teaching, they just connect you. All of my BS that I tell you today is things that you may choose to use to connect with something else. They don't exist in themselves. They're just the bridge. And Taurus builds the bridge because Taurus is fixed earth. And Taurus is the ground, literally the actual ground, being still, fixed earth. And it is the ability of that ground to mysteriously reflect the divine just by being the ground that, uh, that brings us to the hierophant. For the first time, my Taurus moon made sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> people look at Taurus and they're like, oh, Taurans are like, they're all about Stubborn. greed and stubbornness. And it's like, it's the, it's the physical world that becomes the reflection of truth that is their Zen. Like, it's very spiritual. What's that? Yeah, Taurus has the best aesthetics. Yeah. They have Taurus and Libra taste and aesthetics. They're like, mm. they're like the sugar cane. <laughs> yes, yes, that, the Taurus hair. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I've always been thrown off by it because of the, the Pisces Taurus Cancer. And I'm like, where is this Taurus fit into me at all? Taurus love so around us. They're also they very love nurturing. luxury. They're also very self sweet themselves. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Tauruses are the best. So last sign is Virgo, which is the hermit. Where are the Virgos at? Oh, you guys are the best. I love you guys so much. Virgos are all about the perfection of themselves and uh, they're mutable earth. So mutable earth being changeable, but it's earth. So it's like earth updating all the time, growing, complicating itself. It is the Virgo energy that brought the Big Bang to all the beautiful complex experience we have now and all of our diversity and species and all this stuff. So uh, the Virgo is how can I perfect myself? How can I help people perfect themselves? Right? And th they always mean the best. But the dark side is the critical nature. But th that criticism shows up in the hermit card, which is all about renunciation and wisdom and the ascetic life. And yeah, Virgos are so good. It's all about how can I be my best self and, uh, and help the world, which is what a hermit can do, shed the light. How can I help shed the light of what's happening within to what's happening without with everybody else? Mm -hmm.